Today, Arise News Arts and Culture features a new exhibition happening right now in London. It's called 53 Echoes of Zaire, popular painting from Lubumbashi, Democratic Republic of Congo. Presented by the Sorga Buell Lovell Gallery, it is the first survey exhibition of Congolese artist Chibumba Kanda Matulu to ever take place in the UK. Well, the gallery cu curator, Selamata Diop, joins me in the studio. You're also the program director for uh, the Africa Centre. Um, the first question for you, of course, is uh, Chibumba, who is he? Because he seems to be this slightly mysterious, magical art artist that's, that came and went without sort of really much trace left over. Yeah, well, he's pretty mysterious, but he's uh, paradoxically the less mysterious, the artists in the show because we don't we know very little about the others yes uh, what we know about him uh, because he worked with a big expert on the this movement called Johannes Fabian because he was a friend to the collector Etienne mm -hmm. Boll is that he's someone who uh, lived in that region who originally wanted to become a teacher and who in the end maybe accomplished this that goal uh, through painting yeah. Yeah, I mean, and he's self-taught as well. And we've got some pictures of his work we can have a look at now as well. And what I think is fantastic is there's such a clear direction and style in the way that he draws um, for someone who is self-taught. It's incredible. Yeah, very much so. Um, he was uh, really part of that movement. Uh, and this is the Zaya School of Popular Painting. Yes, yeah. but it's very typical of Lubumbashi because you don't really find political subjects mm -hmm. in the art that was made in Kinshasa and even art that was made in Lubumbashi was not always political. So this is really a clear movement that's very, very special in that. Well, I thought it was really interesting because, and I've said this to you before, looking at the pictures, it is very much a, a great history his sort of history lesson, if you like, about the formation of the DRC. Um, some of the things that I really found um, amazing, you know, you, you said you delighted to into these five sections, so the, the colony Belge, for instance, talking about the colonial oppression, but also, you know, um, uh, the Eucene Gessamine, or Gessamine, rather, which, of course, is still relevant today because, of course, you've got Gessamine mines still working in the DRC. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's important to, to know that these artists uh, did not consider themselves as artists, like, as we would use the word today. Uh, there were Chibumba, for instance, would see himself as a historian and an artist. And this this art was collected by local people. It was not uh, meant for tourists to mm. buy it. It was collected by the city dwellers of Lubumbashi. Um, so yes, this historical lesson is very important. Why would they collect it to maybe? Um, remind themselves of their identity, their history uh, in their homes, mm. um, I guess. It's very interesting. Um, what about the fact that, you know, you've got these pictures together and as I said, it's this incredible sort of snapshot of the history of the DRC and an amazing artist and an amazing art movement that's not mm. often spoken about. Um, so what about, you know, when these pictures do eventually get sold? Um, I, I mean, are we not worried about the fact we might lose this huge bit of information that's, that's great as a series? Absolutely. Well, the, the exhibition, I think uh, Christian uh, will agree with me, the garrist, uh, we, we see it as maybe a trigger. We want to trigger something. We would like uh, to attract the attention of an institution. Uh, we would like to attract the attention of researcher because there is very little uh, written about these artists, this movement. Very little is known about them. So we really hope that it will not be uh, divided, that it, it will remain one collection uh, remind as a whole and yeah. they may be accessible to the public forever. Well, it's certainly a call to arms. Hopefully someone watching might have some influence <laughs> there. Um, another thing that it sort of t touches on, I talk about the history of the DRC, but it also talks about sort of the pre-colonial um, DRC and we're talking, you know, uh, 1400s when, you know, the Portuguese first populated. Tell us a little bit about how they illustrate um, that. Um, I think uh, there are the few paintings, yes, uh, relating to that period. Uh, it's very peculiar. The one part of, of these uh, are pretty similar to the others. It's the objective of chronicling, a chronicle of mm. the history. So you see uh, slaves being sold, you see them being exchanged for textile and other commodities. Mm. But you also have these couple of paintings uh, depicting quite uh, serene uh, hunting <laughs> scenes and life maybe as a, a golden age, I would yeah. say, something that is imagined 
which is very different to the yeah. rest. One thing I wanted to point out, though, of course, it does sort of touch on the force publique, which, of course, was the, you know, this was the black military force um, employed by the colonials in order to sort of both, you know, protect the state as it was, but also, you know, force labor. And I thought that was really interesting because it doesn't just say it is a colonial issue. It's the, you know, it's the Belgium or the British um, that were oppressing us. It, there was actually internal oppression happening as well. Yes, I guess that the system uh, that that was th how the system was implemented and uh, really um, the RC has has one of the the most troubled the most I would say yeah uh, horrible uh, past and it was uh, an exception even as a colony because mm. it was meant as a personal property of the king so even I would say this, yeah, the, yeah yes. Um, so, uh, Salamata, thank you very much for talking to us. It's absolutely fascinating.